In this video, we will use 3D printing to build an inexpensive conveyor belt for the MPS. During the last years, I've manually packaged and counted thousands of different screws, nuts and washers. All for 3D printed parts that I sell online. So I use 3D printing, PCB design and other processes to build an automatic screw counting machine. The design is based on some fundamental principles and it is parametric, so it should work for a variety of conveyed parts. In this video series, I will go over the components and how I built them. If all goes well, the videos will end with a working modular production system. The more you use a machine yourself, the better it gets. And so far I've run through around 100,000 screws, nuts and washers in tests. But that's not even close to enough. And maybe even more important, the variety of parts that I've tested is not big enough to prove that we have generally solved the problem of counting and feeding fasteners and not just have built a machine that works for a couple of screws. So that's why within the next few videos I want to build a fully automated screw fulfillment system. And at least if it works, it should drastically increase the test volume. For this we will need a lot of feeders, a packaging station and the topic of this video, the conveyor. Each feeder will take a different screw, nut or washer and that will be ejected onto the conveyor. So we should be able to create almost any kit we want and I will never have to count screws again. To maximize reliability, there will be some additional real-world tests. These will be held by some of the companies that I have asked to become a beta tester. I hope that I can tell you more about the beta testers in another video. I think we have a really good mix of around 10 companies with a huge range from very small one-person shops up to really enormously big corporations. Okay, now back to the video. Let's build the conveyor. This is the main assembly of the entire thing. We can look at the individual components separately. These are 54 feeders. They are simply stacked on top of each other. They are placed on a layer of power supply and data modules. This is based on a fantastic comment under the last video by Chris Rockstar. By using a few low profile boxes for this, we can consolidate power supplies and power a single stack of feeders with a single power supply. This reduces cost for the test setup. The feeders are placed on a simple extrusion frame. The conveyor belt is attached to it. With the exception of the extrusion profiles, most of these components are printed. A whole series of smaller boxes will then move below the outputs of the feeder stacks. Either the magazines or just simple pipes then load the boxes and thereby create any combination of parts we want. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you've probably noticed that sometimes my table was quite wobbly. That's why it's great that FlexiSpot asked me to sponsor this video and also provided two desks for me. FlexiSpot makes very stable height adjustable desks. Not only do these desks hardly wobble, they are also quite strong. The desk is easily capable of supporting my weight. The keypad panel has four buttons for height settings and there's also a USB port to charge your devices conveniently. Additionally, FlexiSpot's E7 is built with its own cable management board under the desk. Their Black Friday promotion is already underway and it's still the best time to buy the E7. Use my code to get an extra $30 off. 
This code is valid for the E7 standing desk and C7 ergonomic chair, including the upgraded E7 Pro. You can actually still win a free order, so check out FlexiSpot using the link in the description. This setup used even more printed parts than the one for the CNC machine. The whole build uses 289 printed parts. Most of them are small, but even with multiple printers, that's a few days of printing time. The entire assembly is quite large, so we are just going to focus on a single section, and that section then repeats itself over the entire conveyor. This is one of the 34 rollers on which the belt runs. I press fitted two bearings into it. This bearing size is called 608 and it's one of the cheapest bearings you will ever find. This roller then is completed by a long M8 cap head screw. The screw will then later snap into the compliant mounting plates. Inside of the part there is a long spacer. This is really important to not damage the bearings when tightening the screw. The mounting plates are two parts that are joined together using two dowel pins. The rollers are simply mounted by pushing them into the pockets. For the buckets that we will use to transport the screws, I use these small boxes. To fix the boxes onto the belt, I used the CNC to make small cutouts into the boxes. We can then mount the adapter plate. To determine the exact position of the boxes on the belt with an inductive sensor, I added a small screw. Finally, the belt gets linked to the box. This way of doing it is tricky because there are a few critical dimensions that need to be correct to prevent the belt from skipping. However, some of these dimensions vary with the belt tension. Okay, finally, let's test it. It actually works pretty well. The thing I like the most about it is that it's not sounding like a tank. I was a bit worried that it would be very loud because of all the moving parts, but fortunately that's not the case. Sometimes the belt seems to jump over the rollers, but I think this will improve when some weight is added to the crates. I added two 8mm Teflon tubes to the reverse side. They have low friction and the boxes run nice and smoothly. Some of you will probably mention that I should have just used a typical closed PVC belt to do this. And honestly, that's probably right. The thing is, these belts are kind of expensive. I got a quote for one and it would have easily doubled the cost for the entire build. But still, it wasn't extremely astronomically expensive. I think the correct argumentation should be that since we only really need one conveyor belt, um, double the cost here is not that relevant. I mean, a PVC belt is a boring solution, but boring solutions are usually good engineering decisions. So yes, I think I was a bit stupid with this one. Anyway, apparently it works great, so let's just use it. Now we just need to build 54 different feeders for 54 different parts and a packaging machine. How hard can it be? I know that I have not yet answered a lot of your questions from the last videos. 
What are we going to do with stainless screws and what's that alarm for? Also, I realized that many of you want to know more about me and my background and what I'm actually trying to do with this. The next video will be a slightly different style and I will try to explain basically everything. Who I am, how I got into this and what I think the direction for this is along with a few technical questions. I have actually already started making this video, so if you have any more questions about whatever, um, then please tell me in the comments and I will try to include them. Otherwise, hit the subscribe button. And if you need a new standing desk, consider checking out FlexiSpot. And I will see you in the next video.